Hello and welcome. What we're going to talk about today is the graphs of functions. We're going to start out with actually looking at the graph to figure out what the domain, the range, x, y intercepts are, and a few other questions. Then we're going to move on to functions that have no graph, and we're going to still get the same kind of information, we just won't have a graph to look at. When we are finding the domain of a function, and we have the graph, what we want to do is start from the left-hand side of the graph and work our way to the right-hand side of our graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here. This is the first time we see it, and we're going to go along here until the last time we see it, which is right there. When we look at our graph right here, we see that on the left-hand side it is a closed dot, so it starts at negative 4, and it's included and it ends all the way at 3, which also is a closed dot on the right-hand side. When we want to find the range of a function, we start at the first time we see the graph, which is actually right here. So it starts right here at negative 2, and it goes all the way up until positive 2. So the range of our function goes from negative 2 and it's included so it gets the squared bracket because it's a nice smooth curve there at negative 2. There's no holes there. And it goes all the way up to positive 2 because at positive 2, although it's not a curve, it is a nice closed dot. The next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at our x and y intercepts. So when we take a look at our x and y intercepts, we want to take a look at where the graph crosses the x and y axis. The graph crosses the x-axis at the point negative 4, 0. At the point 0, 0. And also at the point 3, 0. The only place it crosses the y-intercept is at the 0, 0. And here's a little hint to you. If one of your x-intercepts is at 0, 0, and we're talking about a function, that also will be where our y-intercept is. It can only be there. Okay, so let's take a look at some other questions you might find. So, first question is, find f of negative 2. All this is asking you to do is look at your graph, find negative 2 for x, and find out what your x, or excuse me, what your y-value or your output is. So you come over here to your graph, and you go over to negative 2, which is right there. Now you go straight down, and your output value is negative 2. So this is negative 2. The next thing it's going to ask you is find x when f of x equals 1. So come over here to our graph, and it's saying, here's my output. My output is at 1. What is my input? So I go to my output, go across to where I see my graph, and I go straight down. It happens right here, and it also happens right here. So on this one, it happens in two places. It happens when x is equal to 1, and it also happens when x is equal to 2, and 3 fifths. I might ask you also to find f of 3 minus f of negative 2. What they're asking you to do is find out what the output is at 3, and then subtract what the output is at negative 2. So this is equal to the output at 3 is 0, and I get that from my graph. I come over here to 3, and my output is 0. It's right there on the x-axis. I go to negative 2, so I come over here to negative 2. It also is negative 2 as an output. So it's a subtraction of a negative 2. So the answer is 2. The next thing I might ask you is what values of x make f of x less than 0. What values of x do you have that has output values that are negative? That's what this is asking you. What values of x produce a negative output less than 0, strictly less than 0? So we look at our graph. From 0 
to negative 4, we have output values that are below the x-axis, so our y values are negative. So in this area right here, from here to here, is where it's negative. So it happens between negative 4 to 0. And you don't get to include negative 4, because at negative 4 the output is 0. And you don't get to include 0, because the output also is 0. Now, this right here looks like an ordered pair, but it isn't. It's an interval. So if you're concerned you might be a little confused, write this as set notation. So you say x such that x runs between negative 4, not, inclusi not inclusive, to 0 with our funky brackets. The next thing you might find is it might ask you what values of f, what are the values of f of x when x is less than 2. What's it asking you is what are the possible output values when x is less than 2. So my output values can run between here, here, and here. These are my possible output values. But I don't get to include 2. And the reason I don't get to include 2 as my output value is because when I look at my function, or what, what the question is asking me is what values are my output when I have it strictly less than 2. So my output values, I look again one more time on my graph. My graph runs between negative 2 and 2. We get to include negative 2, but we don't get to include the positive 2. So the answer for this one would be from negative 2 well, that, sh that should be included. Let me change that. So from negative 2 inclusive to a positive 2 non-inclusive. Again, if you don't like that because you're afraid right here that this might look like an ordered pair, write it in interval notation. And you write f of x. We are talking about f of x now. Such that f of x runs between negative 2, which is inclusive, to 2, which is not inclusive. All right, so that's what it looks like on a graph. You can grab all the information you need from the graph. Let's take a look at one where we don't have the graph. We just have a function. So here's our first function. f of x is equal to 2x over x minus 2. First question they may ask you is, is the point 1 half and negative 2 thirds on the graph? So the best way to do this is just put in 1 half and see if you get 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds out. So f of negative, or excuse me, f of 1 half is equal to 2 times 1 half over x minus 2. So we get 1 on the top and uh, let me change that. That should be 1 half. So this is 1 half. Let me change that. It's a 2. Kind of a 2. That's a 2. Okay. So 1 half minus 2 is negative 1 and, a, 1 and a half, which is the same thing as a negative 3 over 2. But we don't leave it as an improper, or excuse me, we don't leave it as a fraction over a fraction. So I use our rules of fractions, and this becomes negative 2 thirds. So the answer to the first one is yes, that point is on the graph. Next question is find f of 4. All they're asking us to do, we don't have a picture to look at, is put 4 into our function and see what we get as an output. So f of 4 is equal to 2 times 4 over 4 minus 2, which is 8 over 2, which is 4. And there's our answer. So when we put in 4, 4 comes back out. The next thing they're going to ask here is find x when f of x is equal to 1. Well, if we have a graph, we just look for the output and see what the inputs are. Well, this one, what we do is we set our function equal to 1. So we have 2x over x minus 2, and we set this equal to 1. 
So the first thing we want to do is clear our fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. And what that does for us is it gets rid of this. So we end up with 2x is equal to x minus 2. Subtract x from both sides and we get x is equal to negative 2. So there's our answer. When x is equal to 1, f of x is equal to, excuse me, when, yes, when f, uh, let's try this one more time. When f of x is equal to 1, the input I had to put in there was a negative 2. So, what is the domain? Well, the way in which we figure out our domain when we don't have a picture is look to see if we have any issues. And what I mean by that is we'll go back to our domains. How do we find domains of functions? We look for rational functions where we have an x in the denominator or we look for square roots because that's when we have values. Between those two things is when we have values that will produce it to be non-real numbers. So we look at this and we do indeed have x in the denominator. So if I look at this right here, I know that this denominator cannot be 0. So I say x minus 2 cannot be 0. I solve for x. x cannot be 2. So the domain of my function, either I can do it in interval notation, which is going to go from negative infinity to 2, rounded bracket, jump over that 2, and go to infinity. There it is in interval notation. If you don't like interval notation, you can do it in set notation, which is x. That line means such that x does not equal 2. Now, x and y intercepts. To find our x and y intercepts, we let x equal 0 or y equal 0. So we'll start with the x intercept. When, we let, when we're finding the x-intercept, y equals 0, or in other words, f of x is equal to 0. That should be f of x. So, 0 is equal to 2x over x minus 2. We do like we did before, multiply both sides by x minus 2 and we get 0 is equal to 2x. And so x is equal to 0. And as I said before, if we get our x-intercept to be the point 0, 0, then that also is our y-intercept. So our x and y-intercept is the exact same thing, which is 0, 0. All right, let's look at another one. We have the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 2 over x plus 4. Now we know that we're going to probably have to find the domain. So the first thing you want to do when you're looking at these functions is find what x cannot be. We look to see if we have a square root. We don't have any. We look to see if we have a rational function, and we have one. We have an x in the denominator. So we know this denominator cannot be 0 right here. So we go x plus 4 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 4. So we know our domain right here, x such that x cannot equal 4. And we can go right to it. No waiting. OK. So is 1 3 fifths on the graph? Well, we just put in 1 and see what happens. f of 1 is equal to 1 squared plus 2 over 1 plus 4. We can see this is indeed 3 fifths. So the answer is yes. Next one, find f of negative 1. So we put in negative 1. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared 
plus 2 over negative 1 plus 4, which gives us 3 on the top. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 2 more is 3, and 3 on the bottom. So when we put in negative 1, our output is a positive 1. Find x when f of x is equal to 1 half. So we set this thing equal to 1 half. 1 half is equal to x squared plus 2 over x plus 4. We want to clear that fraction, so we're going to multiply x plus 4 both sides. And also the 2, because I have this 2 on the left-hand side I want to get rid of. So these 2's will cancel. These x plus 4's will cancel. And so I'm left with x plus 4 is equal to, multiply that 2 through, so we get 2x squared plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, bring that x to the other side, and so we have 0 is equal to 2x squared minus x. Let's factor out the x, so we get x, 2x minus 1, so 2. Oh, that's not a very nice 2. That's a 2. And now what we do is set each one of these to 0. So the first one is x is equal to 0. Set the second one equal to 0, and we get 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 1 half. So when I put in 0 in my function, I get 1 half out. And when I put in 1 half into my function, I also get 1 half out. Lastly, since we already found the domain, is find the x and y-intercepts. Start with the x. This is where we let y equal 0. In other words, f of x is equal to 0. So, 0 is equal to x squared plus 2 over x plus 4. Multiply both sides by x plus 4 to get rid of it, and we get 0 is equal to x squared plus 2. This does not factor. It is a sum of squares, and in the reals, it does not factor. It factors over the complex. We don't want to go in the complex right now, so this does not factor. which means there are no, inter no x-intercept. We still have to check for y-intercepts, though. So the y-intercept x equals 0. So f of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 2 over 0 plus 4. And this gives us 1 half. So our y-intercept happens at 0 and oh, 1 half. And there it is.